alternatieve popcircuit torent hij met zijn groep The Bad Seeds hoog boven zijn tijdgenoten uit. In 1980 kwam hij vanuit Australië naar Europa als zanger van de Birthday Party. Een groep waarvan de onorthodoxe, provocerende muziek in die tijd veel opzien baarde. Inquisitive 12 year old boy, uh, me and my friend um, attempted to pull down the uh, knickers of a, uh, a girl in the f uh, 15 or 16 years old and twice the size of both of us put together. And um, we uh, were seen by the, the um, uh, Miss Harris, who was um, an old maid. And um, uh, she decided that we were kind of lost in some uh, orgy of of, um, yeah, of wild um, sexual uh, degeneracy, and um, put us up against the headmaster and um, and the parents of the young girl tried to press charges of um, attempted rape, which didn't really stick because I was only 12 years old at the time. But um, I was uh, forced to leave the school and, um, and shamed and sent to a, a strict public school in the big city. What's the little black book? Oh, the little black book. Um, this is a, a um, an album of um, compiled uh, pictures that uh, that I have um, put together, which was uh, the inside of the Your Funeral My Trial covers, actually, um, um, on. This is uh, Jesus uh, at the well with St. Genevieve. And here is um, a young man watching a woman urinate. Uh, and there's something that you know, ties us together. Here's uh, St. Teresa the Carmelite with her, her feather. And uh, here is um, a young woman being uh, tickled by feathers. Um, yes, this is uh, Saint Rose clutching her breast and another Rose also clutching her breast. Um, here's a group shot. <laughs> um, some of them don't go together quite so well. Saint Colette uh, being given a hand uh, from the coffin. What's this obsession you have with naked women? Um, I don't know, really. I thought every young man had that obsession. Oh, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just drawn to them. Yeah. 
Australia is fairly well documented and I guess uh, coming here as opposed to staying in London is um, pretty much a decision of uh, just what's a more decent lifestyle, what's a more healthy atmosphere for working with people and it's, uh, it just fits better. I, I'd feel much more comfortable here and there's a lot more to do getting involved in different areas rather than just being in a band and that's all you do. Like what kind of things? Well, uh, well getting involved in films and things like that for, for a start. Is there some sort of decadent atmosphere in Berlin as some people think? <clears throat> I think there is, yeah. Very much so. People seem to conduct themselves in a, uh, what would be considered a decadent manner, always staying up all night getting drunk, taking drugs. Emmanuel Kant was an amazing philosopher. He said, what did he say? He said quite a lot. Oh. So hanging out is not the first thing to do. So what is? What is? That's uh, that's in inverted. Um, said work. Work. No. That's the new ethic in Berlin. It's work. Can you tell something about your uh, working relationship with Nick? Well, I've got I've got as much freedom as somebody that I'm not I'm not if I would have the ability to say like writing ordinary songs then somebody could ask me for do this or do that but I'm I haven't got that ability I'm my musical my musical um, education isn't isn't that um, that far into a composition that I can can just say okay I write a song and it goes this chord and that chord or whatever. I haven't got any ideas about that, so I've automatically got some freedom to to write something in a way I particularly think it fits into what he wrote lyric-wise. So I can't do this and make up a song by having this chord or that chord because I haven't got the chords at all. Somebody has to tell me later what chords I've played. Now and other 
De Fall uit Manchester is een van de zeer weinige Engelse groepen... die zich al jaren in de belangstelling van Nick Cave mag verheugen. Na afloop van een concert van The Fall in de Metropool in Berlijn... treffen we Nick backstage aan, samen met onder andere zanger Mark E. Smith. Hansa by the Wall, oftewel de Berlijnse Hansa Studios. Legendarisch vanwege de opname die David Bowie en Iggy Pop er rond 1977 maakten. Maar ook de plek waar een aantal platen van de Birthday Party en de Bad Seeds tot stand kwamen.
Actually, uh, some of the melodies of, of the Bad Seeds are pretty romantic, atmospheric melodies. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Which is a big contrast with the early uh, birthday party stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's just been drawing out some of the, the elements that were there in the birthday party that um, were perhaps quite buried by a lot of other things that were going on. And um, it's not that the birthday party didn't want to have nice tunes, etc., things like that. It was, uh, I think a lot of the, the hype surrounding the birthday party covered up some of the things we were really doing. But yeah, Nick seems to be very uh, keen on having very sweet melodies, quite prominent in the music these days, yeah. When he comes to you with his lyrics, uh, how, how, do, how does it go on from there? Well, these days, Nick usually is writing the music himself again, which is very good, I think. I, I, I'm all in favour of it because I really like the music he writes, for one thing. And, um, and just because then it has a, obviously has a close relation to how he sees the lyrics being sung. So I'm quite happy with that situation. He doesn't usually come to me with lyrics. He's still quite unconfident uh, about his lyrics and things. I and mean, he kind of tentatively shows them to you and uh, gets nervous while you read them three times. <laughs> But uh, I, you know, I usually like them, obviously. And then I said about really interpreting or realising music is written these days. That's what I do. Instrumenting, orchestrating the songs, playing parts, making up my own parts on them, things like that. Nick seems definitely to have a pessimistic view on life. Does the band share that um, feeling with I him? Think, I think perhaps uh, pessimism is... Uh, verbalised by Nick. I th he, he, would he would probably insist that he has a pessimistic view. I'm not sure, actually. But uh, I, I think he has quite an optimistic outlook, personally. Deep down inside, he's... Well, he keeps going, he keeps doing things. He keeps wanting to do things. I mean, I, I've, I get a lot of optimism from him, anyway. So where does the, uh, the pessimism of your uh, l last records come from? Well, um, I mean, I can't really, and I mean, I don't see how I can really answer this question, um, and and why it should even be asked, really. Um, you, I could understand you asking uh, Bruce Springsteen where the um, optimism of his um, records comes from and that it would be um, th that would be something to read I think um, but I think I mean I can I can understand why why um, how, how this is really a question I mean I would, th I would just say that it, it seems pretty obvious to me um, that I think that pessimistic records should be um, treated as um, the norm and the truth and the optimistic ones be the ones that are questioned. Your funeral butter. generation the uh, this the, there was a uh, an unusual unusually large um, yeah you fucking tell him exactly there was an um, unusually large 
Get off the fucking road, dude. It's all right. Right. There's an uh, there's an unusually large um, uh, amount of creative people, I think, from my generation for some some reason. Um, I think it was probably because of um, maybe the 60s or so produced so many morons. But um, these people, uh, though they didn't really do anything, they had quite a bit of personality, really, and um, they tended to um, uh, just spend their lives uh, in bars. And now there's a lot of, uh, like, there's a lot of... Uh, Chicks, for example, at the moment now in Berlin, who are um, who are really going through a, a, a quite a quite a crisis, really, in their lives because they found that they've spent the last 15 years um, every night in uh, in you know uh, night clubbing, and um, they don't know how to do any of the uh, woman the uh, more traditional womanly things like cook and sew. And um, they don't have a steady boyfriend or a husband. They're uh, losing their looks prematurely because of alcohol and drugs. And um, there's a, it's, uh, Berlin's in a state of panic because of this. There's girls sitting on the bar of the X and Pop weeping and, and to themselves because um, there's nothing left for them. I don't like people that just hang around and don't do anything. But uh, I don't, don't, I can't say my attitude to life has changed very much since since I started doing music again. Like my, my attitude is as empty as it ever was. He can make his guitar sound like. I mean, he doesn't use pedals or effects or anything like that. Just plugs into any amp, uses any guitar. Doesn't. Half the time he doesn't own a guitar. Um, comes to tour with no guitar. Where's your guitar, Blixer? Oh, I, you know, I, I don't have it anymore. And he uses the support band's guitar. And and but he can make the guitar sound like um, you know nothing you've heard before. He's brilliant. He's my hero. Faithful to one another, I can feel feel safe in in knowing that none of the other members of the group are going to stab me in the back or um, sully my name, and they know that I would never go against them. I mean, there's a real feeling of um, unspoken trust within our group. say I uh, can really uh, relate to the um, to this area of, uh, of uh, Germany the aesthetics of the um, Reeperbahn or the Ripperbahn as I prefer to call it um, do titillate me somewhat this is not exactly the, the landscape of most of your songs no what about Saint Huck you know, Saint Huck could have come in from the um, from in from the sea and um, and uh, enters via water and um, goes into the lure of the, the big city. This could be very very much the place I think that um, he uh, meets his end. Born of the river, born of its ever changing, never changing murky water. Well, you 
wanna catch you and bait your hook. Let's take a walk. Oh, come to me, oh, come to me, is what the dirty city say to Haka. Drugs. Um. What? Do you use drugs to to get certain uh, ideas? Certain ideas? No. For songs or for writing? No. Like you know, like Jim Morrison, uh, his idea to break on through to the other side to. Oh uh, no no. I mean. No, I mean, particularly that, that type of stuff, I mean. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I don't. Yeah. No, not much. I have used them, yes. I have. But, um, I don't want to make a habit of it, you know. Way and that, and wrapping her in the beaded curtain that hung in the doorway. There she dangled a moment like a limp marionette, then similarly collapsed in a heap at his feet as though discarded by some reckless puppeteer. Douglas Dawes descended the steps and was swallowed by the slow closing crowd, and no sooner had he disappeared than the body of Cosimo stirred and, as if driven on by the numbing narcotic, raised herself to her knees, lifting her right hand a fraction and speaking through a mouthful of blood and teeth. She gurgled, blivered, stupid. The Ass Saw the Angel is de bijbelse titel van het boek waarmee Nick Cave dit jaar zijn romandebuut hoopt te maken. In een platenstudio werkt Cave aan een geluidsband voor een in Hamburg te houden lezing van een aantal fragmenten uit dit boek. En zo maken zo'n 300 toegewijde Nick Cave-fans in het Hamburgse Schauspielhaus voor het eerst kennis met het levensverhaal van een doofstomme jongen. Verstoten door de kleine, streng religieuze dorpsgemeenschap waarin hij is opgegroeid. Toes were curling and flexing and moving in the dust. Her shiny pumps discarded by her side. I could have mistaked her for a lesser work, chiseled by the same deft hand that created the marble angel. Sickle and blonde bangs shone bright as the moon that loomed aloft and deadly still. Beth of stone, spawn of sin, spawn of sin. The, uh, the steps in which my book takes can be um, reasonably uh, in a perverse sort of a way associated with um, the Bible and the or the life of Christ and the um, castigation of the uh, different religious sects. Um, and, I mean, there was an a, a, a incredible number of um, Mormons, for example, that were uh, murdered um, by vigilante groups in the in the in the mid-1800s in America. You know, well, the, the whole idea of the, the more people there are, um, the it's almost by rule, the more people that gather in the one place, the less um, intelligent uh, they're li likely to act, it seems. They get an idea, um, you know, the, they get an idea into their heads and they feel that they're supported by a lot of other people and so they, they feel they have a license to go and um, do things that, that, if you stand back and look at them, are quite gross injustices, like like the persecution of, um, you know, that will, I mean, it's totally against the whole idea of free thinking in America. You've once said about yourself, you may have a persecution complex instead of, a, of being paranoid. I did? You said that, yes, in an interview. You're just saying that, aren't you? No, 
it's, you, I read just read it this afternoon in, in one of the uh, English interviews I have. No, that's you'll, you'll just sign that to get at me. No, I won't. You're I'm just not. another one tr trying to get at me. That's not true. Yeah, sure you are. It's with the, you're talking with you the interview. You want to hurt me, don't you? Basically, you don't like me, but you don't know why. Same with you and all of you out there. You all want me to fall flat on my ass and fail. These chains.